Hey there, Nancy Drew Clue Crew! I'm Margul Fump, and this is the 2020 Nancy Drew Games Mega Marathon! I'm here live streaming with uh, 240 people. We're playing Nancy Drew number 5, the final scene. Dear Bess, remember Maya Wynn from high school? I'm visiting her in St. Louis. We have tickets to tonight's premiere of the new Brady Armstrong movie, Vanishing Destiny. It's the last screening ever at the Royal Palladium. This place has been a landmark for almost a century. And now, in just three days, it's going to be demolished. I wish I could have seen the theater back in the 20s before it was turned into a movie house. All the great magicians performed here, even Harry Houdini. There's a lot of public opposition to the loss of this historic building. Rumor has it local activists are planning to stage a big protest out front tonight. The theater will be closed when we arrive, but they'll let us in since Maya is covering the story for the university newspaper. Oh boy, a press pass sure does come in handy. Maya told me she has an interesting lead, and we're on our way to interview Brady Armstrong about the controversy now. I know he's one of your favorite stars. Stay tuned. Maya always gets the full scoop. Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy. Yeah, la, la, la. Okay, Nancy, here I go. Cross your fingers, there's a story behind this door. Go get them, Scoop. Meet you in the lobby. Testing. <laughs> testing. One, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> think I'll go check out the snacks. Yeah, I think I'll get a popcorn with extra that scream. Like Maya. Help! No! Nancy! No, no, no! I wanted a popcorn with extra butter! No screams! What is going on here? Maya, I'm here to save... Save you, Maya! Maya, you're... Where did Maya go? Where's Maya? Maya? Are you hiding here in the closet? No, Maya's not in the closet, but... A magic wand is in the closet. So that's... Good? Someone's calling. Okay. Where did Maya go? Who's calling? Hello? Listen carefully. If they knock the theater down, the girl goes with it. What? Who is this? Hello? Hello? Threatening phone call from the kidnapper. Ah! I do like the start of the game. It's like, uh, dear best, remember Maya? The person we've never heard of before and we'll never hear about again? She gave me a free trip to St. Louis. Okay, and uh, once Nancy backs away, the culprit calls. I think it's the culprit. Is the culprit calling again, or is it someone else? You'll never get away with this. Do you hear me? Uh, hello? You're crazy. Maya's got nothing to do with this demolition. Um, this is Joseph Hughes, the caretaker. I'm looking for Brady Armstrong. He said he'd be there. Who's this? And what's all the excitement? Oh, okay, it's not a creepy kidnapper. It's Joseph! It's Joseph! Okay, Joseph, he's he's going to be the helpful old man, as opposed to last game where we had the angry old man. In the Nancy Drew universe, old men are either angry or helpful. I, I don't think there's any in-between. My friend has disappeared from Brady's dressing room. I heard her scream. I think she's been kidnapped. Now, now, please try to calm down and tell me what's going on. What's your name, dear? My name is Nancy Drew. Maya Wynn is my friend, and she's gone. I was out in the hall when I heard her scream. I don't know how they could have taken her. Disappeared from the men's dressing room? What makes you think she was taken? I just received a threatening call, saying if I don't stop the theater demolition, I'll never see her again. Whoa. They must have taken her through that secret passageway. Holy smokes. And you're on an inside line. That call must have come from inside the building. We gotta act quick. You check out the secret passageway. I'll make sure all the exits are locked, and then I'll come find you. The secret passageway? Hey, you. No Whoa. groupies in the dressing rooms. But since you're such a rascally fan, what would you say to a signed autograph from yours truly? Oh my gosh, everyone. Is that who I think it is? Handsome movie star Brady Armstrong? I beg your pardon? Take a breath and pinch yourself because it's really happening. Brady Armstrong in the flesh. <clears throat> Star of Vanishing Destiny? Go ahead, faint. I'll catch you. <gasps> Swoon! <gasps> I'm Nancy Drew, starring in a real-life emergency here. I need to find my friend Maya Wynn. Remind me not to appoint you president of my fan club. 
So what was your friend doing in my dressing room? Weren't you expecting her? I thought she emailed you to set up an interview for her article. All my email goes through Simone. She reads it, she writes back. Control issues, you know. Off the record, any message that says love Brady is just a big electronic smooch from her. I really don't want any smooches from Simone, electronic or otherwise. Simone, is that your agent? Simone Mueller, CEO of my life. Uh, I mean, my agent. Focus on being wholesomely smoldering, she says, and leave the rest to me. So I do. She's been setting up Premier HQ in the women's dressing room. Haven't you heard her snarling at people on the phone? No, haven't you heard the screaming? So, you didn't hear a girl screaming a few minutes ago? Maybe you better tell me what's going on here. I heard Maya scream. When I got here, she was gone, vanished. And then I got a creepy phone call from the kidnapper. But where could they have taken her? What did they say? It's something to do with the demolition of the theater. The voice said, if they knock the theater down, the girl goes with it. Those stinking radicals. Radicals? What radicals? They're the ones who are flipping out over saving this theater. Nicholas Falcone and his tree hugger pals. Uh, okay, okay. Um, there's a kidnapping in progress here. Maybe you could hold off on talking about Nicholas Falcone and Simone and maybe try to find the kidnapped person. She may still be in the building. We've got to search this place from top to bottom. Roger. My name's not Roger. It's Nancy. It's Nancy Drew. Okay, so that's a really exciting opening to the game. And now the game starts for real. We have this music. Do, 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 burm, 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 burm. It's locked. That drawer is locked, and uh, the hidden passageway. Hidden passageway. See this man just stuffing money into his pockets and laughing. Yeah, he he hides the hidden passageway. So I I have to wonder. I have to wonder why this man has so much money, and why is he stuffing it into his pockets? That's what I'm wondering about. Uh, anyway, uh, hidden passageway over here. Here's the hidden passageway. Yep, so the culprit took Maya through this hidden passageway into the women's dressing room and then called Nancy from there. Uh, I don't know if you were paying super close attention during the phone call, but uh, it was the inside line, so uh, the, the room for the inside, inside uh, the, the ladies' dressing room, well, that button was lit up. Okay, so let's go. And here's one of the best lines of the game. I may have to cut this short, Hal. Someone just climbed out of my wardrobe. Can't you see I'm on the phone here? This is an emergency. I'm looking for a 19-year-old girl with black hair. Listen, sweetheart, I have a premiere tonight and no stylist for my star. So don't tell me about problems. But this is an emergency. I said scram. But, 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 kidnapping. This calls priority. Try me later. Uh... So there's the phone that the culprit was using just a few moments ago. And there is nothing else of nothing else of interest in this room. Gross. Oh my gosh, that's gross. Somebody unplug that sink. It's yuck. And there's a moose head for some re reason. Old files. I really would like like to take a look at all this stuff and explore it. Like this looks cool. Yeah, why aren't they saving these old books and things before destroying the uh, theater? And, uh, that's it. That's it. Okay. So, uh, what do we want to do now? Do we want to solve puzzles or do we want to meet some other characters? What, what do you people in the live stream want to do? Yeah, I love how Simone is so casual about Nancy. She's like, oh, somebody just climbed out of my wardrobe. Uh, whatever. I think I'll show off a death scene here while people decide, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let people comment on what they want me to do next. So, death scene is something like this. There we go, we connect that, uh, and then we're gonna pull the rope, but we're not gonna secure it. Characters, characters, puzzles, 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 so three votes for each. Okay. 
So I, I didn't pull the rope up all the way. I need to pull it up. Just a little bit more. Okay, and instead of securing it all the way, I only secure it part of the way. So, Nancy dies. Ow! Ow, 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 ow! Okay, well, you know what? We, I think we got more votes for, uh... Hmm, I think it's characters now. I think it's characters. I think characters won. Um, so, let's go meet characters. We've got Nicholas Falcone in the lobby, and then we've got Joseph upstairs. And this is a really cool, really cool place. There's J.J. Thompson, the original owner of the theater, and his creepy evil eyes. Oh, and there's a movie poster. Brady Armstrong in Vanishing Destiny. My destiny vanished. What happened? No teeny boppers till showtime. House rules. Have you seen my friend Maya? She's 19, 5'5", five, five, black hair. She has on running shoes, jeans, and a black shirt with butterflies on it. And the crisis is... Um, she disappeared. She's a reporter kidnapped. doing a story on the theater demolition. She was trying to interview Brady Armstrong. Forget Charmstrong. If she wants the real story, she better talk to me. And who might you be? Hollywood? The fantastic plastic vacuum? I wouldn't go there in a pig's suitcase. I'm Nicholas Falcone, solemnly sworn to lead the forces of Haddit and slay the dragon of corporate generica. Who are you? And what's with the doom and gloom? Uh, hi. My friend's been kidnapped. And generica? What? Uh... I'm Nancy, but I think I missed something. Generica? Haven't you heard? The battle is on. There's a human chain forming out front as we speak. But all that can wait. It's obvious you got a situation. So what's up? My friend's been kidnapped. I've got to alert the police and then start searching this place. Whew. Kidnapping? <laughs> That's a high-profile tactic. Somebody means business. So what's the demands? Suddenly, Maya's fate is tied to this theater. They said that if it gets demolished, she'll go with it. No kidding. <laughs> That'll blast those bureaucrats and corporate bigwigs out of their dream world. Applause for the cause. We need all the help we can get. What? You must be joking if you think any building is worth more than a human life. And it's a lousy joke, by the way. I'm sorry. I know you're upset, but they won't mess with your friend. They just took her for effect. It's called making a statement. As somebody points out, it's like you, you, you tell this person something and they pick up the dumbest, most unimportant part of your giant paragraph. It, it, like, Maya's missing. She's kidnapped from Brady's dressing room. What? You were hanging out with Brady instead of me? That's so not cool. It's like, try to focus on the important stuff here, Nick. Oh, so this is just a pretend kidnapping. I never would have guessed. Maya's scream sounded so real. She'll be okay trust me. Right. I need to start searching for evidence, but I'll be back with more questions for you, Nicholas. If you need a phone, there's an outside line in the ticket booth. Yeah, yeah, very, very suspicious, Mr. Nicholas. And there's his butt. Nancy, what's the 411? The 411? The 411? Come on, Nancy. That's vintage slang. You know, the 411, the deal, the lowdown. Oh. Oh, the information. Exactly. So, humans against the destruction of illustrious theaters. Tell me about it. This theater's a spotted owl. It's a humpback whale. It's endangered. Illustrious buildings testify to our finest human hours. They should be celebrated, not bulldozed to make way for cardboard megaplexes. Need I say more? Yeah, but the theater is not making any money whatsoever, and it's sort of a rundown wreck. Do you know what they plan to build on this spot after the theater is gone? Oh, it's very hush-hush. The name of the building firm is Wave of the Future, and the owner is some B. Thompson, descendant of J.J. Thompson, but he's never available for comment. Fishy, right? Ten bucks says B stands for baloney. Yeah, I mean, somebody who's rich enough to buy a theater, like, in cash, well... Clearly, clearly that person has plenty of free time to talk to angry protesters. If he's not taking calls, he's suspicious. Catch you later. Fight the power. Fight the power. <laughs> What's up? 
Can't talk long. Got to check on my people. You do need to talk to uh, Nick like three times in a row to learn why he loves the theater so much. What's your attachment to saving this theater? You seem so personally invested. Politics is personal, but with this place, it's ultra personal. My grandma, Louisa Falcone, designed the molds for all the insane plaster work that you see in this lobby and in the auditorium. The detail is so intricate. You just don't see this kind of artistry in new theaters nowadays. True, true. But there's more. I guess the architect owner guy, J.J. Thompson, ran out of cash before the building was done. He never paid my grandma dime one, and then he denied that she had ever done the work in the first place. Why didn't he give her the credit? Yeah, she was the artist type, not a deal maker. I guess she'd never signed any contractual stuff with JJ, and she didn't have the resources to sue him or any of that. So I guess she just had to let it go. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. She must have been so frustrated. Here's the kicker. After JJ sharked her on this two-year project, she was broke, and then the Great Depression hit. She could never afford to work as an artist again. Was she bitter about it? Louisa, Mother Serenity Falcone. Ah, she just kept on trucking in true Falcone style. Died at 97 without a bitter bone in her body. I think she had a happy life. But this theater holds the last artwork she ever did. Don't you see, Nancy? Saving this place is not just for history. It's for justice. Great justice! She should at least get credit for her work. My family has been trying for years, but there doesn't seem to be anything on record that links her to this place. Nancy, could you do me a favor? Maybe there's something buried in the theater. While you're searching, could you just keep your eye out? If I run across the name Louisa Falcone or anything else that might help, you'll be the first to know. You're cooler than I thought, Nancy. I try to play it down. Okay, so... Nancy will have to keep her eye out for anything about Louisa Falcone while she's exploring this theater. Because forget about kidnapping, we need to find this random dude's grandma. Yeah, she needs justice. She needs big justice right now. And uh, let's go inside here. Inside here we have somebody else's butt. Hi, Joseph. You must be Nancy. The worry's written all over your face. Well, I'm Joe. I started to look for you, but then I figured better to park myself and let you find me. Any trace of your friend? Joe. It, it would have been nice if you came to visit me first. You're like, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll secure the exits and find you. And by that I mean I'll secure the exits and then just hide over here doing nothing. I found the secret passageway all right, but no sign of Maya. I can't believe this is happening. Well, what about calling the police? There's an outside line in the ticket booth. That's a good idea. So I should call the police? That is a good idea. What did the police say? I haven't called yet. This is not something to take on alone, Nancy. You better call. Fine, I guess I can call the police. Let's check out some stuff here. Don't touch that projector, dear. It's a temperamental old beast. I can't actually play with that quite yet. We'll do it later. Okay, this is a, a, a slide that I can use on the... I can use at some point. Here's how to work projectors. Uh, projectors, they need these things, and here's a key. There was a key. a key here. Yes, we have a key. That will be for later on in the game. We have a puzzle there. Here's a little closet with a projector bulb. The fact that we have instructions on how to use a projector and a projector bulb right next to each other makes me think we're going to have a projector puzzle. <laughs> you know, just that alone. That alone. Okay, so do we want to call the police or do we want to start solving some puzzles? I guess we can call the police first. Okay, so we're gonna call the police. Four one one. Oh, that's that. That's not it. Okay, nine one one. St. Louis Police Department. I'm calling to report a kidnapping. Is the kidnapping in progress? No. Hold on, miss. I'll transfer you to the missing persons unit. Missing persons, Sergeant Mac Ramsey speaking. I'm calling to report a kidnapping. No longer in progress. And who am I speaking with, please? My name is Nancy Drew. 
Okay, Miss Drew. Now, did you witness this kidnapping? No, but I heard it. What exactly did you hear? My friend went into a dressing room. I was out in the hall, and I heard her scream. So I went in after her, but she was gone. When and where did this happen? Just now, at the Royal Palladium Theater. And what's your friend's name, Miss Drew? Maya Wynn. Can you spell that, please? M-A-Y-A, -A, last name N-G-U-Y-E-N. Age? 19. Physical description? She's Asian American, I guess about 5'5", five, five, long black hair. So you didn't actually witness anything, is that right? I heard her screaming, and I received a threatening phone call. That must count for something. A threat. Can you describe the voice? Was it a man or a woman? It was spooky. I think they were using some voice disguise device. Hmm, yes. That'll make it impossible to tell the gender of the caller. Did you notice anything suspicious looking in the vicinity? No. No suspects. Any visible signs of struggle in the dressing room? Did your friend leave anything behind? Her purse? Anything that might have fallen out of her pockets? No. No evidence? Does your friend work at the theater? No, she's a student at Washington University. Does your friend have any enemies? Maya? I highly doubt it. And what business did Maya have entering the theater dressing room? She's a reporter for the school paper. She was there to do an interview. What about Maya's parents? Have they been contacted? They're in Vietnam this time of year. I don't know how to contact them. Okay, miss. I'll file this report. After 24 hours, if she hasn't turned up, we consider her a missing person and begin to investigate. How can she turn up? She's been kidnapped. Unlikely. With all the scuttlebutt around this demolition, this stinks of student prank. A prank? But this building is going to be demolished in 72 hours. How can we afford to take that chance? How do you mean? The kidnapper must be holding her in the building, don't you think? Unlikely. No competent kidnapper keeps her captive anywhere near the scene of the abduction. Is there anything else, Miss Drew? Sergeant, I really don't think we can afford to wait 24 hours. It's standard procedure, Miss Drew. Unless you can provide us with some evidence that your friend was taken by force, it's 24 hours. Thanks, Sergeant. I'll call you back when I have the evidence. You do that. Bye. A very unhelpful police officer, indeed. So I thought this game was pretty interesting because it's, it's structured. We have three days of the game, and our goal on the first day of the game is find evidence that Maya was kidnapped. That way the police can come and investigate. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, should we call Nancy's friends? Oh, there's the other phone. This is uh, the, the phone line in the ticket booth. Now nah, let's, let's do some puzzle solving. Okay, so the first puzzle is up here. We'll call Nancy's friends at the end of this day of the game. So let's see. So this thingy, it fell off. It's down here. I can't quite reach. And Nancy can't reach it. <laughs> yeah, if you try, you, you fall down. I can't quite reach. You need the magic wand, but it doesn't look like the magic wand is good enough by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up some old chewing gum, which is left inside the theater, which is gross. But that's how we solve this particular puzzle. Yeah, if that police officer even tried to sound sympathetic... That would have been nice, but no, he does not. He's just kind of a jerk, just like the person who left this bubblegum here. That's not where you're supposed to leave your bubblegum. That's just gross. Oh yeah, and we have uh, this puzzle too. Bees and E's. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. We go down, down, down. We Go down to the right, we go down, down, right, 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 get in the fight, gonna go dance all night, we're going down, 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 dooby doo dooby down, 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 dooby dooby down. Now how am I gonna get out of here? I don't know, I have no idea. Okay. Like this? Uh... Uh... 
gonna get caught. Yeah, this 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 piece is moving differently on Master Sleuth mode than on Junior Sleuth mode. Ah! There we go. I'm still trapped here. I'm like trapped. I'm like trapped. No! Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is old jazz or swing music. I don't know which style. Either way, it's pretty fantastic, this song. I keep getting stuck. Okay. I think what we do is we go up here. Get that, get that piece stuck. I don't know how to get that other piece stuck though. I need to figure out a way to get past that piece on the right. I just go super far down like this. And if I go right here, would that work? No, it wouldn't. Right, here we go. Yes, got it. Okay, I, I managed to just go around here through this area, and it's following me instead of blocking my way to the exit. Yay, and we've got JJ Thompson special picture of himself special picture of himself we solved it this is such a cool theater by the way it's just 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 big theater it's got those special balconies too it's special balconies on the side where the old people lean out and then make fun of everybody yeah. Okay, so we talked to the police. Joseph, I've got bad news. The police aren't going to do anything. What did the police say? According to their policy, Maya's not officially missing yet. If I want their help before tomorrow, I have to come up with some evidence of foul play. But this theater's going to be torn down in three days. Did you tell them that? Uh, yeah. Didn't listen! didn't care they say it's unlikely that the kidnapper would keep her in the building well i checked all the outside doors and and they're locked up tight only folks who've been in the theater all day are brady and simone you and maya nicholas falcone and myself you're suggesting it must be one of these people well i've only got this one pair of eyes so i can't say 100 percent. are you counting yourself as a suspect i was up here in the projector room sound testing for the premiere but I'd be disappointed in your detective work if you didn't put me through the ringer like a regular suspect. Yeah, I remember. He's going, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Sound testing. Yeah, I think I remember hearing you practicing your MC voice now that you mention it. I reckon if the kidnapper wants the demolition stopped, they must be keeping Maya somewhere in the building. Did I mention what the kidnapper said? Oh, I think so. Or maybe Brady told me when I saw him in the hall... He seems eager to help. Helpful suspects. What more could I ask for? That's the spirit. Now, what's your plan of attack? I have no idea. Operation Busta Kidnapper is about to begin. Where can I get an insider's guide to all of the secret passages in this place? Try calling county administration. The records division keeps that type of stuff. I bet a blueprint would show secret passages that even I've never found. Ask for the original plans, not the ones from the 56 remodel. What was the 56 remodel all about? J.J. Thompson, the original owner, died in 1950. His kids inherited it and decided that movie theaters were the wave of the future. Anyway, I spent the last 40-something years finding my way around this place, so let me know if I can help. You've been a big help already. Don't let the turkeys get you down. <laughs> Don't let the turkeys get you down. Righty, so I'm gonna, let's see, I'll solve the puzzle. 
we haven't really talked to Simone yet, though. So, uh, the, the puzzly, puzzly, puzzle. Bleh. Tell you what, I'll solve the puzzle, uh, that's, that's backstage. And then, 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 I will, I will, uh, do what he said with that county administration stuff. Okay, so you want to secure the box, that way it does not fall on Nancy Drew's head when she goes here. We don't need to call county administration to find a hidden passageway. We found the hidden passageway on our own, because we're awesome like that. Let's see, two things here. Oh my gosh, this is the one that I, I am not good at. The Amazing Monty. Ladies and gentlemen, step right up! Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, so this is a puzzle. Do I select left, right, or middle? Which one do I select? Find the Ace of Spades. Keep your eye on the card. Candy would be delicious right now. Yeah, but I don't know. Um. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to pick left, right, or, or, or center. But everybody in the live stream is now talking about candy. They got distracted by candy, and they can't focus on anything else. Okay, then. Right, okay. Oh, Ooh, failure. I'm sorry. Perhaps you need your eyes checked. <laughs> the hand is quicker than the eye. Okay, next trial. Find the ace of spades. Keep your eye on the card. And the next vote is right. Right again. Woo! Congratulations! You beat the magician. Don't forget to collect your winning. Hooray! <laughs> Your audience will be dazzled. So keep this in mind for the final puzzle of the game. You can throw something at a person to create a smoke bomb. And I don't think we can play it again. Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Oh my gosh. We killed it. This magician needs some first aid. Ah, uh, wasn't me, it was somebody else. Somebody else, somebody who's not me. Okay, so with this puzzle, you want to make everything into spades, right? So it looks like the way to do that is to start with number four first. So four, three, one, no, 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 four, two, one, three, and then five. Got it! Woo! And now this puzzle. Uh, we have to make this painting. This is an actual painting which exists in real life, unless I'm mistaken. They didn't, like, create this for the game. It, it's a real painting. I'm guessing they were able to get the painting for free. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think there's a border over here on the right. Unless I'm mistaken. This... I don't quite remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's a picture of a face. So somebody's face. Yeah, that looks good. These these pieces look fantastic. That one, that one looks bad. Um, so that's a face. Then that must be the eye. And then this must be the neck. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe this is that up there piece. Yeah, there we go. It's it's a it's a person and we've got some sort of astronomy thing uh theme, it looks like, right? There's more of the neck. And this is the shoulder. This has to be the crown the person is wearing, correct? This is just such a really cool picture. It's it's very stylized and unique. I, I like it. This is an okay picture to do for a, a jigsaw puzzle, right? Okay, this has to be the upper... I mean, that has to be the piece here, because it's got a little bit of her hair in the corner. Hmm. She's got hair flying everywhere, though. Uh, uh, obviously, she's got hair on the right and the left. I see. So maybe this piece goes here. No, that's not it. Um, here, perhaps? 
no, wait. That piece there, yeah, yeah. And then this piece here. Yes. No. Uh, um, hmm. No. Yeah. I think this is it. I think we got it. Woo! I do like the little sound when you move the tiles. That is a pretty cool, cool little sound effect. So, you put the two gears we found earlier, put them into place, and this gives us the Luisa Falcone stuff. Dear Mr. Houdini, congratulations on your latest unbelievable feat. Never have I seen the crowd at the Royal Palladium so enthralled by a performer. It was stupendous! Honestly, I was assured the watery grave was inescapable, even for a master like yourself. Really, I, um, uh, <laughs> wouldn't have risked my money if I had known you could actually defeat my challenge, Mr. Houdini. So I actually don't have the money to bet right now. So hey, tell, tell you what, I don't have $50,000, but I do have this theater. So why don't we share the theater? I will give you 50% order ownership of the theater. It will be fantastic. And uh, by the way, you can't sue me after you agree to this. Please. Ja signed JJ Thompson, signed Harry Houdini. Okay, so Thompson did not actually own 100% of the theater. He gave 50% of it to Harry Houdini uh, in 1925. And here's a key for the upstairs area, which we will see at the very, very, very end of the game. So, I think that's everything. Let's just talk to people now. I believe we can talk to Simone and Brady now. Nancy Drew, Simone Mueller, don't worry, Vanishing Destiny is off. We've got bigger fish to fry. The premiere has been canceled? Of course. I mean, a kidnapping? Right out of my star's dressing room? The premiere is small potatoes. It's worth more to us canceled or at least postponed. When the news gets out, the whole nation will be watching. I'm worried sick about my friend here and all you can think of is another media event. <laughs> Where are you from? River Heights. Why? Yes, precisely. <laughs> River Heights. Listen, doll, I'm from L.A. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. We'll find your friend, or Brady Armstrong will, and when he does, every girl in America will wish she'd been kidnapped instead of Maya What's-Her-Name. You can't even remember Maya's last name and you're pretending to care about her? Earth to Simone, this is not a movie. But what could be better for the image of an on-screen hero than to save someone in real life, huh? Agents wait their whole careers for a chance like this. My friend's in trouble. This is not a career opportunity. Honey, you've got spunk. Ever consider acting? This girl power thing is red hot right now. Of course, we'd have to think of a stage name. Nancy Drew is so utterly forgettable. So Simone's kind of a terrible person. I'm asking everyone, where were you when the kidnapping happened? Oh, please, Nancy. I was on the phone doing business. But if I'm ever hard-pressed for entertainment, I'm sure kidnapping would be a real hoot. She couldn't have been on the phone, right? Because she would have seen the kidnapper take Maya through the room. The kidnapper called on the phone in this room. Where were you? And she's never going to answer that question, is she? How long have you been Brady's agent? Uh, I discovered him on an electric spring morning six years ago. He was working the original Coney Dog stand on Sunset Boulevard. It was pure luck. I was craving an all-beef frank at 7 a.m. He's been the jewel in my crown ever since. Joseph says the building was probably locked when the kidnapping happened, and that the kidnapper had to be someone who was inside the theater. Care to comment? Why don't you tell that little gray troll that I think he did it, just to keep himself from dying of boredom in this old dump? That's my comment. 
Yeah. I think your phone's about to ring. Love ya. You don't love me. You don't love anybody but yourself. I don't think we can use this uh, paper on anybody, though. On your stage name? I'm thinking Samantha Quick. You love it, right? I think your phone's about to ring. Ciao. It would have been cool if we could use it on her. Okay, so she thinks Samantha Quick would be a funny stage name for Nancy. How about Fancy Jackson? It's a little disco, but I think you could pull it off. I think your phone's about to ring. Love ya. Yeah, it is funny how she calls Joseph a little great troll. And yeah, Samantha Quick, Fancy ja Jackson, both cool names for Nancy. I think Nancy Drew is a pretty good name myself. I think that's a good name for a book character, video game character. And I think that our friend Brady is here. Oh, he puts down the book to talk to me. That's so nice. Need any help? Don't you want to know what Maya's article was about? Well, uh, I thought you said it was about me. Well, yes, Brady, you are the center of the universe. Well, Brady, you are the center of the universe, but actually, her article was about the theater. Then what did she want to talk to me for? I'm an actor, not a politician. Good question. <laughs> Do you mind if I take a look around in here? Be my guest. I'm asking everyone, where were you when the kidnapping happened? Me? You think I kidnapped Maya and then breezed in here just four minutes later? Where would I hide her, in my back pocket? That's a good point, but that would be a good move if you were trying to establish an alibi for yourself. Just answer the question, Prince Charmstrong. Charmstrong? You know you love it. You know you love it. Just keep talking. I, well, I was late getting back from a haircut. I, uh, this is hard for me. I think my hairline might be receding. It's miserable. Simone's gonna go through the roof. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, so that's, Nancy is just so mean and angry and sarcastic in this game. It's very different from normal. She's super upset because her friend was kidnapped. It really adds a different flavor to all of her dialogue. I like it. And uh, why are you interested in helping me? Why are you so interested in helping me? Well, Maya was kidnapped from my dressing room after all. I just can't help thinking maybe they meant to kidnap me. Yeah, it is strange. It's like he's, he, he's worried about going bald, so why is he cutting his hair? You think he would immediately stop getting all haircuts for the rest of time Talk to protect to you later, his, Brady. his hair? Don't be a stranger. Okay, so now let's uh, call the county administration and uh, get their info. And uh, here we have just all sorts of pictures. Like, Nebraska! A Rogers and Cumberstum American Musical. And this is a picture from Nebraska. Yeehaw! Yeehaw. Just silly little things. King Liam! Mm. William Shakers. King Liam. No, not Shakespeare. William Shaker. And this is a wonderful city. Wow, they look like they're not having a good time at all. Brigadine, the musical, starring Keith Swan as Timmy McAllister, Ty Cooper as Jeff Doogie, Jonna Robbins as Floozy uh, uh, Flora? Flora? I don't know. And here is Brigadine. Wow. Wow. Actually, that picture makes me way more interested than the poster. Um, yeah. The Merchant of Milano. <laughs> Another thing which seems like it would be a Shakespeare play, but it's not. There's J.J. Thompson. Two pictures of himself, really. Oh, wow. And he, he has a memorial to himself here. And uh, uh, a musical thing. Cool. Okay. Uh, I got a little distracted there. Okay, so Brick... Brigadane is supposed to be Brigadoon. Never heard of that. I assume that's a play. Is there popcorn? Can I get some of this popcorn? I was really hoping for more popcorn. How goes the search? I found some of JJ's personal documents inside a secret panel in the basement. Well, don't just stand there. Start breaking it down. 
Did you ever hear about a challenge that J.J. Thompson issued to Harry Houdini back in 1925? Yeah, and? J.J. put up a big reward for this Houdini challenge. He must have thought the escape was impossible. But Houdini did it. And J.J. didn't have the reward money. What does this have to do with the ownership of the theater? From what I can tell, J.J. had to give Harry Houdini 50% of the theater as the reward. Ha! Serves that swindler J.J. right. Nancy, do you realize what this means? Okay, it's saying here, uh, I'm getting uh, comments on the chat saying, so Brigadoon was... Uh, a Scottish musical came around, came out the same time, around the same time as Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and I have heard of that one. I'm working on a couple of theories. If Thompson didn't own the whole place, then whoever inherited it from Thompson doesn't legally own the whole place either. Brigadoon's a musical. It, it takes place in Scotland. It's a town that falls asleep for a hundred years and then just suddenly wakes up. Super interesting. Yeah, I mean. That sounds like you could make a movie about it, not necessarily a musical, but just, just any movie. That would be really interesting to do. Someone in Houdini's family may be able to call this demolition off. We've got to find out what happened to his half of the ownership. You keep looking for Maya. I've got a laptop out in my van. I'll get online and do some research. Check back soon. Catch you later. On the flip side. Woohoo! Okay, so he, he is leaving, and now we can get these uh phone numbers so <laughs> fight the power fight the power so actually i think we were supposed to look at this one no 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 it, it's kind of confusing we've got two two things we can look at here so here's the important one uh County administration three one four five 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 three three zero nine five 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 Three three zero nine. Let's do it. Five Nancy, five five. It's Joseph. Wait till you see this. Come to the projection room. We'll do that later, Joseph. Calling county administration now. Five 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 three three zero oh, nine. Records, Madeline speaking. Hi, I'm looking for the blueprints for the Royal Palladium Theater. Do you have them on file? Are you a county employee? No, just a citizen on a mission. Okay, well, we do keep blueprints on file. Let's see. The computer says there are two sets for the Palladium, 1923 and 1956. Do you have a preference? 1923, please. The originals. Would you like to hold while I retrieve them? Sure, thanks. Waiting to hear... Oh, such nice music. Ma'am? Yes, I'm still here. It's very strange, ma'am. They're gone. Gone? You mean someone checked them out? Oh, we don't allow people to check them out. You can bring the blueprints to our reading room and study them there, but they're not supposed to leave the building. I can't imagine where they could be. Hold on, let me see if Charles knows. Charles... Could you help me, bro? Do you know where the blueprints are? Ma'am, this is so strange. Charles says some guy was just in here looking at them a few days ago. What did he look like? Hold on. <laughs> Hello? Charles said the guy had a hat on. He never really got a look at the guy. Was he young or old? Hey, Charles, young or old? Energetic is all Charles remembers. Hmm, okay, well, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm working on some things over here at the Royal Palladium. Could you do a search for the blueprints? Sure thing. I'll put in a find request. Call back in five to seven business days. Next week? Oh, I'm afraid I don't have that kind of time. Is there any way to expedite the search? I'm afraid not. The guy who does our misplaced material searches just returned from a month of paternity leave, and he's swamped. I see. This is urgent? Yes, it's urgent, all right. But I'll figure something out. Thanks, Madeline. Good luck. Bye. Oh, oh so the game automatically saved uh, the thing for you. That's nice. Okay, 
Uh, let's call Nancy's friends. Let's call Ned. Yeah, we're going to do all the phone calls here, then meet Joseph, and then we'll have, uh, the, the end of day one. Hi, you've reached Ned at Omega Chi Epsilon. I'm not here to take your call right now, so please try again later. <laughs> yeah, Charles! Dang it, Charles! Why can't you remember who the culprit is? You could try a little harder, Charles. Someone was kidnapped. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's Nancy. Nancy! It's about time! How's St. Louis? Something terrible has happened. Maya went to Brady's dressing room to interview him. I guess he wasn't there. She screamed, and now she's gone. I think she's been kidnapped. Oh my gosh. Why would anyone want to kidnap Maya? I received a threatening phone call. Somebody wants desperately to stop this demolition, and they're holding Maya as a bargaining tool. That's terrible. Have you called the police? I called, all right, but get this. According to standard procedure, they can't get involved until Maya has been missing for 24 hours. What could possibly be standard about a girl getting kidnapped? They're not convinced it's a kidnapping. Well, how did she disappear then? Poof? Alakazam? Sergeant Ramsey says it could be a prank, or Maya might have just taken off or something. Sergeant Ramsey obviously doesn't know Wash U's most dedicated reporter. It's true. The only way she would have abandoned this story is if someone dragged her away from it. Do Maya's parents know? They always travel this time of year, remember? And besides, I've got to find Maya before this demolition. I doubt her parents could get back from the other side of the world before then anyway. What a mess. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been so personally attached to a case. Call me back when you know more. I'll get a hold of George and Ned and let them know what's going on. Poor Maya. I guess the only consolation is that she's got you on the rescue mission. Okay. So that's interesting, that, that, that phone call, because, uh, well, George wasn't there. Usually George is there with Bess. And just even having one of the girls as opposed to both the girls gives you, uh, just, just makes the uh, thing seem a little different. All of this poster, uh, somebody's new groove. Yo, I've got a banana in my hair. <laughs> okay, uh, Joseph wanted to talk to us uh, over here. You know, phone calls in this game are really good. They take a long time, but they're still very interesting to just to hear the way the characters talk. They always have interesting small things to talk about. Even something little like, oh, he's gone on paternity leave. Well, that's, that's interesting, I guess. Let's talk to Joe. Nancy. Take a look at this. So, Joseph actually found the evidence we wanted. Joseph is our hero. Oh my gosh, Maya's press pass. Brady found it. This should be enough evidence to get the police over here, don't you think? I should think so. Give the police a call. And then you better go back to your hotel and get some rest. Gosh, I am exhausted. Go ahead and use the phone in the ticket booth. I'll be down in a minute. That's it. That's going to bring an end to day number one once we call in this evidence to the police. Here. St. Louis Police Department. Missing Persons Unit, please. Please hold. Missing persons, this is Ramsey. Hi, Sergeant Ramsey. This is Nancy Drew. I spoke to you earlier today about the disappearance of my friend, Maya Wen. Hello, Miss Drew. You're calling to tell me that you found your friend, I hope. I wish that were true, sir. No, she's still missing. I'm calling to report that I have the evidence you asked for. What did you find? Someone else here at the theater found Maya's press pass. It was clipped to her shirt when she went into the dressing room. It must have been torn off when she was kidnapped. Or it fell off. Or she just tossed it. Maya is very serious about her work, Sergeant Ramsey. She never goes anywhere without that pass. And she would not willingly leave it behind. Is the pass damaged in any way? No. Was anything disturbed in the area where it was found? I don't know. I'm not the one who found it. Okay, well, thanks for checking in, Miss Drew. If Maya hasn't turned up by tomorrow, we'll definitely be out to investigate. 
Someone will take a look at the press pass then. But you said that if I found evidence, you'd investigate the theater today. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but we can't go chasing after every kid who decides to take a leave of absence. The vast majority of missing juveniles disappear of their own accord, and they reappear when they're good and ready. You have to believe me. Maya would never play this kind of game. Nicholas Falcone said he thinks somebody is using her to make a statement. Nicholas Falcone? Is he involved in this? Are you involved with him? Haddad is demonstrating against the demolition in front of the theater. Nicholas has set up shop in the lobby. I've spoken to him. I'm not involved with him. Are you aware of the allegations against Mr. Falcone's character, Miss Drew? Allegations? Nick Falcone operates according to his own rules. He'll do just about anything to save a theater, and he's not afraid to use extreme tactics. What kind of extreme tactics? You name it. Vandalism, sabotage, chaining himself to demolition machinery. Is that right? And last year there was a situation over in Nashville. Just when the oldest theater in the city is about to be torn down, and mind you, had it is there in full force, a girl goes missing. So happens she's the daughter of the demolition boss. They go crazy looking for her. There's a call, just like the one you described. Anyway, to make a long story short, the demolition is called off, and three weeks later the girl is seen snuggling up to Falcone in a Memphis coffee shop. Are you suggesting Nicholas is staging this thing? I'm just saying that there's more to situations like these than meets the eye. Nick Falcone is a real operator, and he likes to humiliate the police. I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon here with this whole royal palladium thing and let him make my unit look like a bunch of chumps. I see. So you aren't going to have any credit with us if you join ranks with him. Does he have a criminal record? Oh, minor stuff. Disorderly conduct, trespassing, yada, yada, yada. But Nick Falcone can slime his way out of a sticky situation like no one I've ever seen. Unfortunately, there's no jail sentence for being a royal pain in the neck. There are no good citizenship awards for it either. Look, I know you're worried, but for now, there's nothing we can do. And there's nothing you can do either. Why don't you go home and get some rest? I'm sure you've had a long day. Well, this has been very informative, Sergeant Ramsey. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night, Miss Drew. Sergeant Ramsey really, really doesn't want to do his job, does he? It's like, you need to find evidence for me, Nancy. Mmm, I don't think that evidence counts. I'm just gonna stay here and go to sleep. See you tomorrow. I heard the whole thing, Nancy. Go get some sleep. I'll keep an eye on things till morning. How did you hear the whole thing? I was inside a room and the door was closed. Ah, 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 save the theater! I've had it with this theater being destroyed! I love it! And what's this? Somebody sent us... Creepy R.I.P. Deepest sympathy. Planning a funeral is such a dreadful pain. Wouldn't you rather just stop the demolition? Yeah, so the culprit, ugh, the culprit got us a bouquet for Maya, because she's, she's going to die. It's creepy and weird and not, not cool in the slightest. Ramsey, it's been a day. Why don't you, why don't you investigate now? You've reached the St. Louis Police Department. This is a non-emergency line. Calls will be answered in the order they will receive. All operators are busy helping other callers. We will be with you as soon as possible. Your patience is appreciated. Okay, I've had enough of that. Uh, yeah, 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 there was a van in that scene. That must be Nick's van. I've got a laptop out in my van. Yeah. And check this out. We've got a missing poster all about Maya. Complexion, part oily, part dry. Did we really need to... Did we really, really, really need that? Um, I don't know. And then reward. Maya Wynn from River Heights, sophomore at Washington University, blah, 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 blah. Brady Armstrong's offering signed posters of his new movie, whose national premiere is postponed. I'm sorry you had to see that wreath, Nancy. It's disgusting. It's creepy and weird. This is one creepy kidnapper, that's for sure. Uh, let's hope the kidnapper just did this to scare you. <laughs> like I'm not scared enough? Like I don't know time is running out? The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. I don't know how the press got a hold of this, but they're all over it like ants on a picnic. Where did those missing posters come from? I can't say for sure, but I can make an educated guess. 
it is a question. How did they know that Maya has a birthmark on her right ankle? I would like to know that as well. Uh, yeah. I have a feeling you and I are betting on the same horse here. Can you believe the way she diverted all of the attention away from Maya and used the poster to promote Brady as the big hero? This shouldn't be happening. It's all backwards. I don't know. I think the poster was more about Maya than Brady. Anyway, we can talk to Joseph about a lot of stuff, so let's do it. The police told me Nicholas Falcone is known for using extreme tactics to further his political causes. Why are you letting him use the lobby as his headquarters? Nicholas has been hanging around this theater since he was a little boy. I know how torn up he is about the theater. This will be over soon enough, and then he'll go home. I don't think he's dangerous, for gosh sakes. So where will you go after the demolition? Are you planning to retire? Greasewood, Arizona. My brother Jake is there. It's a tiny town with no movie theater, so we're going to put one on the map. I got some money saved. Who is this J.J. Thompson character anyway? Old J.J. Owner, visionary, wheeler dealer. J.J. loved a magic show. He had this place built with those kind of big spectacle shows in mind. J.J. also happened to love the sight of his own mug in the mirror. You can tell by the way he uh, ornamented the auditorium with his own head. The history of this theater is so rich. I'm surprised the city of St. Louis isn't more interested in preserving it. Well, they are interested. The Historical Society's been working like the Dickens to get this place declared a landmark. But someone downtown has been stalling. They're awfully close. Gotta go now. Chin up! Okay, chin up, everybody. Chin up. So I think we've got two storylines here. Um, one of them is with Nicholas. So let's talk to Nicholas. Nancy, what's the 411? You didn't tell me kidnapping was part of Activism 101. That's all hearsay, Nancy. They got no witnesses, no testimony, no nothing. So you have or have not used kidnapping to further your causes in the past? I am not an eco-terrorist, and I would never orchestrate the temporary disappearance of anyone who wasn't in on the plan and down with the cause. No, but seriously, you faked the kidnapping in the past, Nicholas. This, this is not a good thing. There's nothing I hate more than a bold-faced liar, Nicholas. Remember that. All right, Officer Nancy, chill out, will you? I'm on your side. Tell me about your relationship with the police. All I know is they like to dig through my garbage and follow my van. Does this face say America's most wanted to you? I'm asking everyone, where were you when the kidnapping happened? I was outside, harnessing public outrage. Ask anyone. He was with the big crowd shouting, What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! Joseph told me that the St. Louis Historical Society is in the process of trying to declare this building an historical landmark. They've been in that process for years. It's all just a big wad of red tape, a bunch of bureaucratic hocus-pocus. Had it's about action, not paperwork. Catch you later. Fight the power. Fight the power. I got the number. I left it in the ticket booth. This woman isn't a Houdini herself. She's the widow of one of Houdini's cousins. But it couldn't hurt to give her a call. I'll get right on that. Sounds good. Okay, so he went out to his van to get the phone number. He finally got that phone number. Sorry, it took me so while. It took me so long, Nancy. I actually stopped to get a pizza uh, on the way there. So, uh, yeah, pizzas are fantastic. Okay, I'm going to call you Sish and drop off. Should I call Ned or Bess? Yeah, should I call Nancy's friends or just, just stick with calling you Station Vravov? Yes, hello. Hello, is this Eustacia and Dropoff? Who else would it be? Everyone else is dead. Oh, Mrs. Andropov, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm trying to find out some information about Harry Houdini. Is it true that you're his cousin? Who wants to know? Oh, I beg your pardon. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm a detective working on a case in St. Louis. Harry was only my cousin by marriage, but my husband is dead, and so is Harry. So I guess that makes me nobody's cousin. Satisfied? I'm researching Mr. Houdini's ownership of the Royal Palladium Theater. Would you know anything about this? He owned it. Have of it anyway, for a few months. But then he died. Does that help? Do you know what happened to his half? Did he sign it back over to J.J. Thompson? 
Return it to James Jehoshaphat, Mr. Stupendous, not on his life. Losing that man was Harry's greatest escape. Did someone in Houdini's family inherit the theater? Harry made a plan to give his half of the theater to someone he admired. A young magician, I assume. Perhaps a protege. I remember my husband telling me this. Can you tell me anything more? More? I'm 96 over here. I don't exactly have time to burn. I know it was a long time ago, Mrs. Andropov, but this is terribly important. My friend is in danger, and finding out what happened to Houdini's half of the theater may be my only hope of saving her. Call the Library of Congress. Ask about the Houdini collection. There must be something in all of those letters. You tell that Sherman Trout, you stay, she said. You are not dead yet, Shermie, so get up and make yourself useful. The Library of Congress. You don't happen to have that number, do you? <clears throat> well, I should have this letter from Shermie around here somewhere. Cat food coupons. Vincent Jack has a repair. There you stay. Here we go. Library of Congress, Washington, D.C. Two zero two five 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 zero zero zero. Thanks, Mrs. Andropov. You've been a great help. Save it for my funeral. Poor Mrs. Andropov. It sounds like she's about to drop off the face of the earth, expecting to die any day now. Save it for my funeral. Hey, you're not dead. Why don't you do some work, okay? Manuscripts. Uh, I'm trying to reach Sherman Trout, please. Speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Mr. Trout. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm a detective working on a case that involves Harry Houdini and the Royal Palladium Theater in St. Louis. Eustacia Andropov recommended I call you. Oh, uh, yes. Eustacia was most helpful to us when we were assembling our Houdini collection. I presume you'd like to have a look at it? Yes, please, Mr. Trout. I'm very interested. Fine. Well, you'll just need to register with the library when you get here and fill out a request for the materials you wish to view. When your request has been processed, the materials will be delivered to one of our reading rooms where you can view them. Mr. Trout, please let me explain. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to come to Washington, D.C. to do research. I'm hoping you could help me find a document. Well, Miss Drew, I'm sorry if you have logistical constraints, but please understand my own limitations. The Library of Congress currently holds over 40 million items, contained in 10,000 separate collections. It's the largest and most comprehensive library in the world. I simply don't have time to run research errands for the individual citizens. Mr. Trout, if I don't solve this case in a matter of hours, the building I'm standing in will be demolished and an innocent 19-year-old girl, a friend of mine, may lose her life. You may be my only hope. Why is your friend in danger? She was kidnapped by someone desperate to save this building from demolition. And what can you possibly be hoping to find in the Houdini collection that would help matters? Mr. Houdini was part owner of the theater, and I'm trying to find out who inherited his half or what became of it when he died. I'm hoping Houdini might have discussed it somewhere in his personal documents. If I can prove that the current owner is not legally the full owner then maybe I can get the demolition stopped and save Maya. I see. Well, this sounds urgent. I suppose I can take a look. That would be such a help, Mr. Trout. If you find anything, could you overnight it to me at the Royal Palladium? Well, I certainly can't send you the document itself. It's a historical artifact now. But I could send you a slide. What's the street address there, if I find anything? It's 1330 Washington Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63101. Please send the package in care of Nicholas Falcone or myself, Nancy Drew. I can't tell you how grateful I am, Mr. Trout. You might just be a lifesaver. Miss Drew, I assure you, Sherman Trout is a man of his word. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> that's, that's not as fun as the conversation with uh, Eustacia. You're not dead yet, Shermie. Come on, come on. You've got to help out here. And people wanted me to call Ned, so that's what I'm going to do.
Hello? Ned, it's me. Nancy. Bess called and told me what happened with Maya. I've been worried sick. Did she tell you what the police said? About the 24-hour delay? Yeah, she told me. But I have faith in you, Nancy. You've solved plenty of cases before without help from the police. So let's get down to business. Who are your suspects? It seems there were only four people in the building at the time of the kidnapping, besides Maya and myself. Brady Armstrong, Simone Mueller, his agent, Nicholas Falcone, a political activist, and the caretaker, Joseph Hughes. Any hunches? Not yet. I've got a lot of work to do. Call me any time. I'll try to stay close to the phone. By the time I finally got to talk to Simone Mueller, she had heard all about the kidnapping and canceled the premiere of Vanishing Destiny. Hmm. Sounds like bad news travels fast around old theaters. That's just the thing. Simone didn't seem to think Maya's kidnapping was bad news at all. She kept calling it a great opportunity. She kept saying what fabulous publicity it's going to be for Brady. Sounds like she knows how to turn a profit in any situation. The question is, is she just responding to the situation, or did she have a hand in creating it in the first place? No flies on you, Nancy Drew. Sounds to me like your detective mind is in high gear. According to Joseph, the St. Louis Historical Society has been scrambling to get the Royal Palladium declared an historical landmark. And that would prevent the demolition? Right. So what's the holdup? Joseph thinks someone downtown is stalling. Hmm, maybe someone who wants the demolition has been greasing some palms. Probably. It's a shame because Joseph seems to think they're close. I wonder if this kidnapper is just trying to buy a little more time. What does Mr. Falcone have to say about the Historical Society? He was pretty cynical. Said the whole process was a bunch of hocus-pocus. Hmm, perhaps Mr. Falcone is using cynicism to disguise his true feelings. I've got to think of a way to get this demolition stopped. Well, the police aren't being much help. But couldn't you try contacting the owner of the building? I'm sure he or she would be willing to postpone for a couple of days. I mean, what's the rush? According to Nicholas, his name is B. Thompson, and he won't talk to the press. Hmm, I wonder what he has to hide. His building firm is called Wave of the Future. Catchy. I wonder what he has against the present. Ned, I just remembered something. Joseph used the phrase Wave of the Future when I first met him. He was talking about the remodel of the theater in 1956. Do you think it's a coincidence? I don't know, Nance. If Joseph turns out to be the owner of the theater and the guy behind the demolition, I think it'll be fair to say you've seen everything. Harry Houdini must have been quite a character. What makes you say that? Oh, it just sounds like he was so generous and passionate about his craft. Everyone loved him. Any theories yet on what he did with his half of the theater? No, but I highly doubt he was generous enough to give his half back to old J.J. Thompson. That wouldn't have been an act of generosity anyway. It would have been a lapse in judgment. I could use a hint. I'd like to help Nancy, but I think you'd better ask Bess and George. My detective skills have been a little rusty lately. Bye, Ned. Be careful. Ned. Ned is not helping. Aww. Okay, so, uh, basically, we, we finished the thing with Sherman Trout, and he's gonna send us that, uh, package on the next day of the game on the next day of the game. So for now, let's get going with the other storyline, Simone and Brady. Simone is planning a press conference. Have you seen the posters? Aren't they fabulous? You made the posters? When? After Brady found her press pass, of course. Where did he find it? You know I was searching for evidence to show the police. You know every hour counts. But when Brady found the pass, you used it to promote your star before you turned it over? Maya's on the poster. It says she's missing. So what's your issue? Brady's out plastering those posters all over St. Louis and every podunk town for 50 miles. He's due back at any time, though, for the press conference. Press conference? What's he doing that for? Just to make sure this case isn't falling below the public radar. And besides... It's not for sure she's in the building. I've invited the press here today to report on Brady's commitment to solving this case. You know, a few questions, a few photo ops, no big deal. That funeral wreath was awful, wasn't it? What do you know about that wreath? I had it moved out front for the press conference. We want the press to know just how heartless this kidnapper is, don't we? Then it's all the more fabulous when Brady saves the day. 
I think your phone's about to ring. Ciao. Uh. Well, I think we talked to her, and that's what causes Brady to appear in his dressing room. I guess I'm wrong. What causes Brady to appear? No idea. Let's run around. Perhaps we need to talk to uh, Joseph one more time. Oh, let's, let's 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 update Nick. Did you call? What's the story? Sure did. Go on, spill it. She didn't know much, but she gave me the number of this guy at the Library of Congress who has access to the archives of Houdini's letters. And what did they say? We're expecting a package. Cross your fingers, it gets here in time. Way to go, Nancy. You're on fire. Can you believe Brady's agent has called this press conference to trump up his heroics? She can barely even remember Maya's name. Don't worry, Nancy. This cowboy will be on the scene with a megaphone in each holster. I guarantee you the press will get more than they bargained for. Catch you later. Fight the power. Fight the power. So he's got a megaphone and he's going to heckle during the entire press conference. Good plan, Nicholas. Hey there, Nancy. Gotta go now. a girl. Okay. I think we've given Brady enough time to appear. Let's see if he does appear. Yes, yes, okay, he's here. How are you holding up? You've already been a big help. Is there anything you can tell me about Maya's press pass? I found it in the basement. Uh, I mean the balcony. <clears throat> it was the balcony. Balcony, basement, whatever. It's just my friend's life that's in danger here. Please, Nancy. It's not me. I guess I should have my eyes checked. I could have sworn that poster was all about you. It's Simone. She's relentless. I'm just a hostage on her runaway bus. That's funny. I don't see any gun to your head. Just a wad of money dangling in front of your nose. It's more complicated than you think. Listen, I've got to get ready for this press conference. I'll talk to you later. Not now, Nancy. Now? Not now, Nancy. But what about... Not now, Nancy. Uh, fine. And I think this starts the press conference. I'm going to sneak into the theater booth, uh, the ticket lobby, so we can hear all of the press conference, because it's pretty funny. Uh, okay, folks, we're about to get started here. Uh, Mrs. Mueller and Mr. Armstrong will do their best to answer all of your questions in the time allotted. Uh, uh, but let's proceed with, with good manner, shall we? <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. I'm only sorry that the circumstances of our meeting are not more festive. Wouldn't it be nice if we were all gathered here today to revel in the blockbuster success of Brady Armstrong's new movie, Vanishing Destiny? Wouldn't we all prefer to turn our attention to record ticket sales and the squeals of delighted fans across the nation? But, alas... We have come together today over tragedy, not triumph. I've called this conference specifically to let you know, and I trust you will take it upon yourselves to inform the world, that Brady Armstrong will not rest. The greatest performance of his career will not be unveiled until Maya Nguyen... Hey, lady, you're breaking my heart. But isn't her name Maya Wynn? <clears throat> until... Maya Wynn is returned to her friends and family, safe and sound. Already, our real-life hero has searched this theater and uncovered important evidence. Already, he has driven 200 miles in a rent-a-car, no less, distributing missing posters to all the outer-lying regions of this great city. You see, Brady Armstrong is a hero and a regular guy all rolled into one. Ooh, I'm swooning. Put a sock in it, Mr. Camouflage. And now 
Without further ado, I'd like to open the floor up to questions. Uh, is it true that the girl was at the theater to interview uh, Brady Armstrong? What was the interview about? Mr. Charmstrong, do you find your fans respond to you more in your chicken suit or in your curly wig? Did uh, anyone hear her scream? Uh, Ms. Mueller, you're his agent. Uh, chicken suit or curly wig? Any speculation of where the kidnapper's hiding her? Where did this funeral wreath come from? Isn't it a little unusual for a uh, movie star to help with a kidnapping like this? People, one at a time... Brady. Well, with all of my experience on the silver screen, I feel well prepared to save the day in St. Louis. Do you think the kidnapper is violent? Mr. Charmstrong, have you ever thought about growing a mustache? It might really distinguish you. Is it true you're offering a reward for the facts leading to Maya's return? That's right. Autographed movie posters for anyone and everyone who comes forward with a decent lead. Uh, yes, is it true that, uh, that Detective Nancy Drew is on the case? Yes, Nancy Drew is investigating... Is she available for comment? Ah, uh, it's a difficult situation. You see, Maya is a friend of Nancy's. And the personal connection, well, it may be clouding the detective's judgment. She's really on edge. Isn't anybody around here concerned about the welfare of this magnificent theater? There's more than one life at stake today, you know. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, press people, over here. If you want the real story, talk to me. Sorry, Miss Mueller. You'll have your photo op in a moment. Yeah, over here. Down by my van. So everybody goes hanging out in Nicholas's van. Yep, that sounds pretty accurate to me. Everybody, come in my creepy van. Where we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go on my laptop. I, I've got, I've got some cool pictures in my laptop. Here's a picture of me with a mustache. Here's a picture of me in a chicken suit. It's, it's, it's fabulous. Okay, so we have that phone call. I mean that that phone thingy. I want to open up this drawer. I believe we need to open up this drawer and take. A bobby pin. And then this is some extra stuff you don't have to do, but it, it's cool. Pictures. So what is she taking pictures of? There's Brady Armstrong in the curly wig. If you ain't Baroque, take our tours. Oh, oh no, that's the curly wig. Oh man, that's an amazing wig. And here is him promoting chicken. He does not seem very happy about that chicken suit. And uh, the press pass apparently was found lying down in the basement. And Brady took a picture in the basement uh, on the balcony. No, this is the main theater. And here in the balcony, I'm sick of taking pictures. Oh, a cast knife for this one. Yeah. So that's why Brady didn't know uh, where he found it. Simone took a bunch of pictures. Talent Agency. Mama Centrix Wellness Garden. Aspect Ratio Studios, New York. Happy Spines. Oh, chiropractic. Oh, oh, ow, my back. Ow, it hurts. Martini and Sushi Bar. You can eat sushi and get super drunk. And Ginger's 24-hour flower orama. She ordered the funeral thing. She spent 300 bucks, about 300 bucks, on the funeral wreath. Yes, yes, Simone was the one who ordered it, not the kidnapper. And this is just oh, oh, gross. Okay, so this is she's kissing this card because she loves Georgie Bear. Georgie Bear, can we actually call Georgie Bear? Let me take a picture with my phone. I'm so taking a picture of my phone here. So 813, I believe, is the password for her phone. 813. Oh, did that... Is that not it? That is... That is not it at all. There we go. No. The... Ah! Okay. We're gonna try this again. 
No, no. Got 813 there, but then I got the, uh, the, the sides wrong. Got it, okay. That's, that's how you solve it. So let's check her calendar. So, she's, uh, you know, meeting uh, with Stevie, have a lunch date, dry cleaning, final shoot, then cast party. Huh. Final shoot for what? I thought they were doing the, uh, the premiere today. So here's her emails. Inbox. Mr. Armstrong, I'm a huge fan. I've been seeing your movies since I was like 14. I still think your best performance was Lie Like a Rug, but maybe Vanishing Destiny will be better. I'm in college at uh, Washington University. I'm planning to go to your premiere. I'm contacting you for my uh, school paper. Can I stop by your dressing room? I only have a few questions. Maya. Hi, Maya. I'd be happy to meet with you, so long as we provide any and all photos for me and the article. Also, we need a full-page ad for Vanishing Destiny in the paper. Advertising says it's too late. Maybe you could make that magic happen? Oh, thanks for being generous with your time. Uh, I checked with the advertising guys. They say a deadline's a deadline. Sorry. I'll stop by your dressing room. Okay, another, uh, thing. Dear Brady, my friend Linda said you did your dance moves in Dr. Salsa. What kind of movie is Dr. Salsa? I don't know. So, uh, it's really cool. I watched that movie four times in one day. Do another movie with Tracy Martin. She's so cool. Brady, I've written you 22 emails and I haven't heard anything back. Teen Style Magazine says you care about your fans and you're not stuck up. So what's your problem? Write back! If you don't, I'm joining Leaf Jackson's fan club instead of yours. Desi. Hi, I'm writing because I read an article in PQ Magazine that says men who have ponytails are just trying to cover up a bald spot. Do you have a bald spot? Please tell, I can keep a secret. Xena. Brady, what's up? I was wondering if your next movie is going to be, but I was wondering, can you play guitar? I think you could start a band. I'm in a band. We're called Senator Spanky. Cool, huh? You, you should be in one, too. I bet you'd rock. Oh, I better do my homework. Brady, as far as dudes go, I'm probably your number one fan. Jamie at SpaghettiHead.net. I'm also a young actor, 12 going on 13. I'm wondering if you have tips for me. How'd you get discovered? Please help me. What do you think's a good stage name? Your ponytail is cool. Okay, I think that's it for his emails. Emails that Simone sent. Georgie Bear, thanks for your message. I miss you too, sugar. Can't talk, though. A lot's happening here. I'm a genius. I'll tell you all about it when I get back home. Love your Simonester. G. Davis. So, Georgie Davis, I guess, is her her uh, boyfriend's name. Hi, Carol. Listen, something's up. We won't be flying out of St. Louis tomorrow. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Just cancel the flight. Cecil, things are going better than I could have hoped for. The premiere's off. News is spreading like wildfire. Tell Rhonda great work. Cecil, have you been brushing Miss Sparkles? I checked in with her this morning on the webcam, and she looked awfully bedraggled. She's a very sensitive cat, Cecil. She hates to have a bad fur day. If she's traumatized when I get home, you will be sorry you ever met me. Merv, thanks for getting those contact sheets so fast. The black and white glossies for Destiny definitely need another airbrush. Did you make his jawline look more defined? Damage control. Love this uh, email address. Merv, you look marvelous. And any trash? I guess we can't see the trashed one. So that's it. Simone's random PDA. I wish we could see Brady Armstrong with a ponytail, but Simone made him chop it off. It's tragic. So, I used the bobby pin to open up uh, the drawer in Brady's room. And this tells us how to do the stage technician stuff. So it's one, two, one. One nine two. Then you're gonna do the faders. Oh man, so much. Yeah. So this this opens up the secret magician's room. Okay. So you enter that code. Uh, left and right power. You lower the cages to the to the lowest position. Magnet then. Then you move them up once. And then trap door button. Cool. So let's see if I can remember this. One, two, one. One, nine, two.
Get smart, Nancy True. You're wasting precious time. Stop the demolition or you'll never see her again. Scary message from the kidnapper! Oh no! I have to wonder about this exit. Like, who was checking this exit? Who made sure that the culprit couldn't have left with Maya through that exit? It seems like that would be a, an easy place for the culprit to sneak through. Okay, so, uh... Music! That's, that's the music that plays when you do the Amazing Monty, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so one, two, one... Okay, I was correct. So, turn on the power. Left and right fader power. Move them down all the way. Turn on the magnets. Move them up once, and then hit the trap doors. And that should be enough to get this working. I'm just following the instructions from the book. Yes, you can see those big cages on stage. It's working fabulously. Oh, I broke the bulb. Whoops. It's locked. I need to fix it. Oh, I'll fix it later. And Joseph's area. Yes, now that Joseph's gone, we can see this. Joseph's Joseph's brother, Jacob Hughes, is dead. He died about six months ago. It's very, very sad. So Joseph has basically been doing a <laughs> crossword puzzle this entire time. I think that's what Joseph's been doing. And there's the phone. Cool. Okay, so let's get to that top secret magician's room, shall we? I'm not checking out the poster. I'm getting to the, to the stage. The magician's staging area. Climb into the cage, you go down. And uh, what's in here? You might notice we've got this top secret area. Look through it. Maya's feet! Maya! And she's tied up. Oh no! And the culprit locked me in! No, no, what? No! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Oh no! Maya! Maya, where are you? Are you okay? She's gone! Maya's gone! But her shoe is here. So that's good news, I guess. And we have another trap door. Trap door leading to the mu- Not the musician's room, the magician's room! These pieces won't budge! But the pieces won't budge. We're going to have to use this. Let's go up here. Help! Is anybody out there? Who's there? Nancy. It's Nancy. Nancy? For goodness sake. What are you doing down there? This chair seems to be stuck. Hold on, I'm greasing the wheels here. I found a secret room under the stage. I've got to check it out. The magician's room. <laughs> I swear, Nancy, as long as I've worked here, I've never been able to find my way in. I found the door, but the pieces that open the door are stuck. Here, try this. Hurry. Oh, the uncomfortable close-up of Joseph. Hey, it's stuck again. Hey, it's stuck again. I did not need to see Joseph's face that close up. Okay, so um, he just happened to have some WD-40. So now Nancy can use that on these pieces to get to the magician's room. This should loosen things up. And it's a slider puzzle. So you want to slide all the pieces around. So this piece can go left and right. Yay, that doesn't do anything. Uh, let's move this piece to the right. That piece to the right, but that doesn't do anything. So I have to move this piece up. So I have to move this piece up. So this piece right. So I can move these two pieces down. So I can move this one down. So I can move this down right. So I can move this up. 
Um, yeah. So what do I do now? Hmm. This piece back there. And now I'm completely stuck. Okay, what if I move that piece all the way up and then this piece uh, left? And then, um... That wouldn't be much of anything now, would it? What if I do this? Those pieces right, and then those... The, yeah, yeah, sort of like this. To move just all sorts of pieces everywhere. I'm just, 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 just guessing here how to solve this puzzle. I don't know how to solve this puzzle off the top of my head. There. Got it. Here's a guillotine. Eee. Creepy. So the magician's room, we found it. Pretty cool. Here's a book on that the phantom message. Yeah, you can use a pencil to see what an outline is like for that particular trick. And then the flash paper, we, we already have the flash paper, though. We don't need another explanation for it. And that's a card trick, huh? Oh, a card trick with flash paper. I like it. So let's see. Here, what we want to do is grab the gloves. Rubber is shockproof. Thank you for that information, Nancy. I really needed to know it. And yeah, just random magician stuff. Interesting room. Maya shoe. Her shoe. Mama Mia pizza. She was just here. She didn't even get to finish eating pizza before the kidnapper took her. It's tragic. It's very, very sad. And this is a secret door. A secret door. Ah. With this puzzle, you want to press all the buttons in the correct order. Five, three, two. Five, three, one. Five, five, three, six. Five, three, four. Seven. Eight. Six. Five, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Five, three, four, seven, eight, two. Five, three, four, seven, eight, one, two. Five, three, four, seven, eight, one, six, nine, two. That puzzle's such a pain. Such a pain. Okay, but we solved it, and now Nancy, Nancy can leave. Oh, Nancy. Hey. I think the kidnapper just moved Maya to a new hiding place. Have you seen anything suspicious around here? Wow, are you sure? I didn't see anything. I found evidence that will prove that Maya's being held in this building. Wow! Evidence? Where? I'll talk to you later. I've got to get a hold of Sergeant Ramsey. So Nancy has found the evidence. Hooray! Now she can, uh... Now she can finally convince the police to investigate. Yay! Come on, Sergeant Ramsey, you've got to help here. St. Louis Police Department. Missing Persons Unit, please. Please hold. Missing Persons, this is Ramsey. Sergeant Ramsey, it's Nancy Drew. Hi, Miss Drew. I found Maya. You found her? So the case is closed. I found her, and then she disappeared again. Good grief. This girl's a regular Houdini. All right. What have you got for me? I found a secret room under the stage. I saw Maya through a peephole, but by the time I got into the room, she was gone. The kidnapper must have moved her. A peephole, huh? Are you sure you saw her? Sir, there's evidence. Pizza boxes and one of Maya's shoes. I left everything where it was so you could see for yourself. So you think the kidnapper's been using this secret room as a base camp? 
Mm -hmm. Well, this is very interesting, Miss Drew. It sounds like you've been conducting quite a search. Now, will you please send someone over to investigate? Yep. Just bear with me while I try to find an available car. Help is on the way, Miss Drew. Great. Bye. Fantastic. Now, what we should do is call the pizza delivery place and, and, and figure out who got the pizza, right? They have to have a record. The pizza was purchased somewhat recently, and that's called Georgie Bear. 213-555-3666. Georgie Bear, I want to hear Simone's boyfriend. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed. No! Check the number and dial again. Oh! It sounds like you've conducted quite a search. Yeah, the search that you thought was unnecessary. That search. I think we talked to Joseph to bring an end to this day of investigation. I could be wrong. Hi, Nancy. What happened? I found Maya. You found her? Oh, that's great. Where is she now? She, um... She was kidnapped a second time. Would you believe she's disappeared again? Are you sure you didn't just imagine you saw her? I'm sure. She was there, and now she's gone. Don't tell me you think I'm crazy, too. But... What do you mean, gone? She left? Well, she didn't just get up and walk away. Her legs were tied. The kidnapper must have moved her. I found a couple of pizza boxes down there, so at least I know she's not starving. Evidence. That should interest the police. Have you called them? Yeah, they said they'll come check it out, but they may not be able to get here for a while. I'll wait up for the police. You get some rest, Nancy. You're going to need it for tomorrow. Make sure they check that magician's secret room. I find it very frustrating that Nancy does not stay to show the police the room herself. She just hands that job over to a suspect. And as we'll see, Joseph totally fails to show all the evidence to the police. Ah! Well, that's it for day two. Now it's day three. Really nobody's here besides the police and uh, the giant wrecking ball. So, the kidnapper, somebody sent a ransom demand for $50,000. The St. Louis Police Department, written by AP Appropriated Press. The St. Louis Police Department received a call yesterday demanding $50,000 for the return of Maya Wynn, a 19-year-old Washington University student who disappeared two days ago. Two days ago from a movie star, Brady Armstrong's dressing room at the historic Royal Palladium Theater. The stunning development marks the first significant lead in the mysterious case. Until now, the police have been reluctant to label Wynn's disappearance a kidnapping, as there been no, there's been no evidence she was taken by force. Wynn, a reporter for the University Student Life newspaper, was at the theater to interview Brady Armstrong for an article. The call came in at 4.36 yesterday afternoon. Due to a voice distortion device, the police are unable to determine whether the caller was male or female, but they traced the call to a payphone in Granite City. According to earlier rumors, the alleged kidnapping was motivated by a fanatic's desire to see the Royal Palladium, save the Royal Palladium for today's scheduled demolition, but yesterday's caller made no reference to the theater. The police now believe the kidnapper's desperation is financial in nature and will not stop the demolition from proceeding according to schedule. As for the ransom... Yeah, Nancy did do a terrible job of explaining. It's like, what happened to her? Well, she disappeared again. You think you could be more specific, Nancy? I don't know. She can't. She cannot. Can I call the police here? I doubt it. You've reached the St. Louis police. Oh, no, 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 no. Nancy, please see me right away. Joseph. Can you believe this ransom demand coming out of thin air? Do you think it's real? Apparently, the call came from north of here, a town called Granite City. Personally, I think it's a hoax. But now the police are convinced that Maya's not in this building. But what about the evidence I found? Are you sure the pizza boxes were in that magician's room? Because the police couldn't find anything. 
That's impossible. Are you sure they looked in the magician's room? They searched the whole building. Did Nancy even tell him how to get into the magician's room? Remember he said, Nancy, I've never been in that room before all my life. How could they miss two big pizza boxes with leftover pizza inside? What about Maya's shoe? No trace of that either. Even without the evidence, that corner of the room had obviously been lived in recently. Follow your gut, Nancy. If you think Maya's still here, you keep looking for her, you hear? I got another threat from the kidnapper. That creepy voice came on the PA and told me to stop searching for Maya. The projection room? But who? Someone must have ducked out of the press conference. I was so busy with crowd control, I didn't even notice. People are wondering why Brady's picture was in that news story about Maya's kidnapping. Yeah, they really didn't need his picture there. Joseph, I did some checking. You don't really have any family in Greasewood, do you? Now what you want to go digging into an old man's life for, Nancy? Everyone's a suspect, Joseph. You know that. If you have nowhere to go after the theater comes down, then maybe you're the kidnapper Desperado. It's not so far-fetched, is it? Now, now. I am going to Greasewood, and I'm not desperate. I made up the part about my brother so you wouldn't feel sorry for me. You've got enough to worry about, don't you? It's only a matter of hours until the demolition. How are you holding up, Joseph? Oh, fine. Everything's great. Fine. Fine. I was up till the wee hours polishing up the lobby. Heck, I, I'm even fixing to repair the old key maker so you can give it a whirl. Guess old habits die hard, eh? Gotta go now. Chin up! No, but seriously, why Why would you try to fix the key maker or, like, clean up this area when it's going to be destroyed in, like, 20 minutes? I do love this. Drew, drew a mustache. Yeah, Brady Armstrong does look better with a mustache. I heart money. Angry eyebrows. Hola. Catch you later. On the flip side. Hey, hey. Hola. Is... Catch you later. Fight the power. Is there anything going on with us getting a package? I thought we were going to get a package from Sherman Trout. I don't know. Okay, well, let's talk to Brady and Simone, and then maybe the package will appear. It is kind of sad that Joseph lied about his brother. I feel kind of bad for Joseph now. What are you doing hanging out with that Falcone jerk? Uh, okay, what are you doing getting super overprotective? Who are you, my overprotective big brother? That guy's bad news, and he's certainly not going to help your credibility with the police. I like how it takes two days for Brady to realize Nancy has spoken with Nicholas. Don't worry, I don't trust him any more than I trust you, or anyone else around here for that matter. Just trying to help. Talk to you later, Brady. You betcha. So is the package in the ticket booth? I'll go and look. Uh, maybe I missed it. Any news? Talk to you later, Brady. Bye. Yeah, you know, we could have sold some of the stuff. There's a lot of useful stuff here in the theater that you think could be sold for money before just knocking the entire building down, right? Like that Bees Knees Jazz Machine. You think you think people would be interested in playing that, right? That Falcone jerk ruined my movie poster. I'll never forgive him. Ever. Ever. I don't see any I don't see any package for, for Nancy here yet. Hola. Catch you later. Fight the power. Okay, well then let's talk to Simone. Oh, and I do need to go through here, I believe. Nope, wrong room, wrong room, wrong doorway. This one. It has a quarter. Yay, quarters. Hooray. Okay. So we'll need that to operate the key machine. Simone, you here? Simone is not here. I think Brady is not here either. Ooh. And isn't there like a death scene here? Yeah. 
Nancy's about to get hit by a falling Klieg light. Ah! Oh my. Poor Nancy. Poor, poor Nancy. And yeah, so Brady's not here, but this time he left behind his little briefcase and his book. You Are What You Project by Perry Midplan. So, fame, fortune, and social popularity. If you are, if you think you're a good person, you can do things like this. So, do you say, I'll, I'll get that for you, sir? Or do you say, I'm busy! Get it for myself! Minimum wage is okay with me. <laughs> There's no limit to my worth! I eat my competitors for dinner! I make baldness irresistible! Transforming my life in Brady Dreams of... I don't know why they have that page, but Brady Dreams of, of uh, having a ponytail and throwing Simone overboard because he's the captain of his life. And ah, Astro Sign. So you are actually a pirate of the high seas, so Brady is a Gemini, meaning he must be a pirate. Good. Great. Anyway, <clears throat> Brady left this behind now. So we have some tanning spray, some pro-gain hair strength. Results may occur eventually. He's still worried about being bald. And what's this? A pencil. No, 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 not Maya's that. Maya's notebook. This, Maya's notebook. Why the Royal Palladium? Was it Brady Armstrong's decision or his agent's decision? Any history with the Royal Palladium? Uh, research, does he like it, next project, wait until the end, and then hit him with the evidence. Demand an answer. So Maya had some really, really important evidence to show to Brady Armstrong. And we're going to confront him, because he's going to confess Hey, you. It. He's going to confess the big secret right here. Don't hey you me, Brady, you rotten fraud. Huh? I'm afraid you've lost me. You've been lying to me, playing Mr. Helpful and Concerned all this time. I found her notebook in your bag. I haven't done anything wrong. You have some nerve. I bet that notebook has your fingerprints all over it. Okay, Nancy, here's the deal. My real name is Brady Thompson. Simone pushed for Armstrong more wholesomely smoldering, she said. Yeah, so? I'm Wave of the Future, Inc., the owner of this theater, great nephew of J.J. himself. So, B. Thompson, Big Baloney Thompson, actually Brady Thompson. Brady owns the theater. But you're an actor. Why in the world would you want to bulldoze a theater? The place is shabby. It needs major repairs. It's a money pit and a has-been. Not the image I want to project. Is everything about image with you? Never underestimate the power of image, Nancy. You are what you project. Yeah, I saw the book that you were reading, Brady. So, keep talking, buddy. I don't believe you are innocent. And what is it that you wish to project? When people think of Brady Armstrong, they think sparkling white teeth and healthy glow. Success glows. It doesn't crumble and sag. The hero never rides a has-been horse. But what are you going to do with a site? When I saw these ritzy theme restaurants popping up all over the country, it hit me like pow. My first original idea. Brady Armstrong's Planet Tinseltown. Can't you see it on the marquee? Grand opening. The lights will say it all. Well, actually, there won't be a marquee because you're destroying the entire building. But yeah, Brady wants to destroy the theater in order to build a restaurant. What does this have to do with Maya? I've sworn to be the captain of my own destiny. Maya was going to expose me, muck up my name in this controversy. It would have been a dark cloud over the launch of Tinseltown. So you kidnapped her? And for that, she deserves to be kidnapped? I didn't kidnap her. I found her notepad in the basement with the press pass. I just thought I'd hang on to it for a few days until the dust settles. Now's your chance to do the right thing by calling off the demolition. Sorry, Nancy. Look, you're not thinking clearly. It's obvious she's not in the building. We've searched everywhere. She has to be in the building. I know she's here. You're the only one who thinks she's here. 
There's no evidence. Joseph believes me. He's a confused old codger. Nicholas thinks she's in the building. He's an outlaw, and he's using you. There was evidence. I found a pizza box and one of her shoes. Evidence that no one was able to verify. Who's to say you didn't imagine that stuff? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to rally a wrecking crew. No, Brady, no, no. Yesterday you seemed to really care. Yesterday you were like, wow, evidence. Where? You can't do this. Brady, no! So Brady is summoning a wrecking crew. It's tragic. Brady is about to destroy the theater. So we need to... We're we're coming down to the end. We've got to save the theater. We don't have much time left. Nancy, we could be golden. A package just came from that museum. We may have the goods to stop this demolition dead in its tracks. Check the ticket booth. Good. Okay, we have the evidence in in, in, in in the ticket booth. Where? Here! Miss Drew, I didn't find anything written in Houdini's old hand, but I found this letter. Dutifully yours, Sherman Trout. We've got it, Nicholas. Nancy, you've got to find out what's on that slide. Joseph said the projector is falling apart and... We can't wait for Joseph. He's probably roaming around saying goodbye to each and every doorknob. I heard they're about to start clearing out the building. You've got to hurry. But the police are going to start clearing the building and... I'll cover for you when the police come in. This is it, Nancy. Go! It's go time, everyone. Go time. Okay. Gotta run. Gotta run. No, 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 not here. Not here. Not... No, no, no. I don't... I didn't, I didn't want to go there. So we need to work the projector to see what's on the slide. But I don't have the key. So in order to get the key... I want to look at the book, and then I'll use that pencil trick from uh, that book downstairs. So the key looks like that. Alright. Um, so I think the key is S-I-V-O. I I could be wrong. Put in the quarter. It is kind of funny, that line. Joseph's just saying goodbye to every single doorknob. V-O. Make key. This is it. I think that's it. I'm gonna find out who the culprit is momentarily. Put the key inside. And guess what? Okay, officers, this is our final sweep. In a matter of minutes, this building will be nothing but a pile of rubble. I'm so close. I just need a few more minutes. Those are the blueprints. Those are the blueprints. And I blew out the bulb earlier, so I replace it with a good bulb. Well, if it isn't the SLPD's ah. favorite nosy detective. Right this way, Miss Drew, you can still get a front row seat for the demolition. No. Okay, officers, no. this is our final sweep. In a matter of minutes, it's this left. building will be nothing but a pile of rubble. Okay. Change out the dead bulb for a good bulb. And then this time, we hide. Hide inside here. See anything, Dino? All clear in here, Sarge. Okay, good. I've hidden from the police. This is probably not a good thing, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so, um, let's look at both things. Both slides. Hopefully the police won't notice me turning on this stuff. Harry, how's tricks? I've seen the papers, I know you're doing well. 
I got your letter. I must say I'm very intrigued by your plans. Thompson sounds slippery indeed. If you want to disentangle yourself from him and have the opportunity to do a good deed at the same time, bravo! What a windfall for a struggling young artist to inherit 50% ownership of a thriving theater like the Royal Palladium. But who's the mysterious beneficiary of yours? A magician? Nowhere in the world... Uh, where in the world did you come across a woman magician? I've never heard of one. She talented? Your generosity is unsurpassed. I command you. I commend your noble heart and look forward to seeing you again at the Princess in Montreal. Dizzy I should notion. switch the power off. So... The theater's half went to uh, some sort of female magician. And oh, the knob broke. Okay, it's under here. But what else is under here? Testing. <laughs> testing. One, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> testing. <laughs> testing. One, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we saw that at the beginning of the game. Right when Maya was kidnapped, that was Joseph Salabi. He said he was up in the room practicing his MC voice. Uh, he wasn't. That was a recording of Joseph meant to play at that moment. He set it up on purpose to give himself an alibi while he kidnapped Maya. And he used this voice-changing machine to threaten Nancy. Yep. Joseph. I need that knob. Is the culprit. Another secret passageway. And there's a secret passageway here in the projection room. Uh, it leads to the ice depository. That's where Maya I switch is. The power off. That's where Maya is right now. And I hey, need to Nancy, turn off I've the been power. looking for you. Obviously, I need to save electricity. Joseph, how did you get past the police? Oh, what for? I've decided I need to get organized, Nancy. Tomorrow I'm really going to straighten up in here. Um, Joseph, uh, yeah. But Joseph, there isn't going to be any tomorrow. Not for this theater, anyway. I think a fresh coat of paint would really cheer things up, don't you? Joseph, the police are, are everywhere. I know it's you, Joseph. But why? Were you trying to buy some time so the Historical Society could declare the theater a landmark or something? Do you think the premiere will sell out? The police think the building is empty. You've got to help me, or we'll all be smashed to bits. Don't tell them she's here, Nancy. I will take her away and knock down the theater. They're going to knock it down anyway. Please, we don't have much time. Don't tell them, Nancy. Joseph, you stinking radical. Let me out. I'm locked in. Oh, man. Okay, well, let's get to the ice depository. Just flip that switch. And I guess I didn't flip the switch correctly. There we go. Okay. So flip the switch to go up here. I must have the key somewhere in my bag of tricks. Uh huh. This is such a terrifying high pressure situation. Okay, so the key we got on the first day of the game, where we read that letter about Houdini, it opens up this thing. And it's happy. This is actually kind of happy. Um, so, uh, JJ, this letter from JJ reveals that Houdini gave everything to Luisa Falcone. And JJ purposely tried to hide that information from uh, Luisa. So I'm going to grab two, two of the keys and see if they work. I think, I think one of them might be the correct key. Let's see. No. Okay, this one. It worked! Okay, that was the correct key. Yay! Oh no, and there's a timer in the bottom left. Oh geez, okay. So when that time runs out, the wrecking ball comes in. Hang on, Maya! I'll get you out of there! She's trapped in the ice! Even Hercules couldn't pull this off! She's trapped in the ice thing. Okay, here we go. Sledgehammer! Got it. Oh, this is useless. Uh, well, you tried, Nancy. You tried. Uh, hacksaw. Hacksaw. Yes. Okay. That 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 will work, right? Maybe. 
This is useless. Can't see. This is useless. Ah, the game's just messing with us, giving items that don't work. The hacksaw, the, the sledgehammer, nothing works. What you're supposed to do is go around to the other side of the room, and who should show up but Joseph? Not so fast, detective. And what you're gonna do is use the flash paper on Joseph that will blind him. Joseph, please let me pass. I can't let you do this, Nancy. Ah, that light! Okay, now I turn on the marquee. Look! The marquee! Stop the demolition! Dear Bess, I still can hardly believe that Joseph, sweet old Joseph, was Maya's kidnapper. He says he planned to kidnap Brady with the idea that Simone could use her Hollywood connections to save the theater. But when Maya entered the dressing room, he panicked and grabbed her instead. Plan B was to stall the demolition long enough for the Historical Society to declare the building an official landmark. I guess he's been at the Royal Palladium for so long, he just couldn't imagine his life without it. But desperation aside, poor Joseph wasn't cut out for a life of crime, and pretty soon things were spinning out of his control. Simone's publicity stunts didn't help. At least he was courteous and kind to Maya through the whole thing. Her testimony should help him in court. The good news is that the Royal Palladium is still standing. Once he heard that Nicholas would inherit his grandmother Louisa's 50% of the theater, Brady decided he'd better find another site for Planet Tinseltown. In order to make amends for things, and because he needed some good publicity, Brady donated his half of the theater to the St. Louis Historical Society. Together with Haddit, they should have this place restored to its original glory in no time. Not such a happy ending for Simone, I'm afraid. She received an official reprimand from the National Press Corps for her stunt with the wreath. Still, knowing Simone, she'll be back at the top of her game in no time. So, here ends the longest three days of my life. The premiere of Vanishing Destiny is back on. But I think this detective is going to wait for it to come out on videotape. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy. <laughs> That's a hilarious ending. All those headlines are hilarious. So, Brady Armstrong, do we still like them or what? Geezer goes gonzo. And I, I really love the guy. Stop the demolition! Fantastic. Also, the picture of uh, Brady hugging Nicholas, and Nicholas is like, What are you doing? Don't touch me. <laughs> That's hilarious. It would have been cool if Nicholas was the one that screamed stop the demolition. That would have been cool. But Simone doesn't get a happy ending. She doesn't really deserve a happy ending. She's a very, very mean person. Yeah. Nancy's waiting for uh, it to come out on videotape. Not waiting for it to come out on DVD. Not waiting for it to come out on Blu-ray. She's waiting for it to come out on videotape. Nancy's going to go visit her Aunt Eloise and watch it inside Aunt Eloise's VCR. So, same voice for Brady Armstrong and uh, the... <laughs> The magician machine downstairs. Nicholas Falcone and the construction worker. I guess the guy who did Nicholas Falcone is in fact the one who screams, Stop the demolition! And Joseph and Sergeant Max, same name. Simone Mueller and Madeline, same, not same name, same actor. And Ned Nickerson, Sherman Trout, same actor in that case as well. And Punchy LaRue playing Bess, cool. So there were, um... Uh, what do you call it? Multiple people that did uh, multiple roles in this game. So this this game came out 2001. Ah, that explains why Nancy gets videotapes. That's how old this game is. So it's about 19 years old now. <laughs> okay. Well, so that's it for uh, this game. Hope you enjoyed playing Nancy Drew, the final scene. Yes! We saved Maya! Maya, whose name did not appear anywhere in the credits for some reason. 